welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Liz Gracia. She is a serial entrepreneur and a Renaissance woman, chef, interior designer, product designer, floral designer, retailer, wholesaler, catalog producer, graphic and web designer, video producer, and an unwitting mystic and powerful healer. She's a student of consciousness and the science of truth and a digital marketing expert. She's been successfully building businesses and consulting with business owners for over 25 years. Welcome to the show, Liz. Thank you, Flavia. Thank you for having me. Now, I love the over 25 years because you've been in business long enough to not only see sort of the the rise of social media and every even just the rise of online business as a whole. So you've definitely seen a lot. How did you get to where you are today? Well, so interesting. While I wasn't even wondering how I was going to answer this until just now. And I'm like, you know what? When I was in Boston, well, first of all, when I owned a restaurant back in my 20s, I worked like a dog. There was no work-life balance in that business whatsoever. And I knew like, I do not want to do this type of hard work for a living. I understood that back in my 20s. And then when I was in Boston, I had this home furnishing store in the 19, late 1990s, when online marketing just began. And I understood back then that I, I had so many tourists that I knew, and I had a pretty significant email list that I collected in Boston. And I'm like, how am I going to reach people? And back at the time, it was a catalog, which is a super expensive, capital intensive business to get into. And then the internet came along. And I'm like, oh, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to create an e-commerce website. And it all began in 1999 for me when I was really like in the wild west of search engine marketing. That's when I first realized, oh, I just created this website. Now, how is anyone going to find me? So that's how, it, how I got to where I am today is um, I started online marketing way back in the early days. <laughs> That is quite a journey. And what do you do today, day to day? So what is like a week in the life of Liz look like these days? Okay. So in 2009, I started a search-driven WordPress web design services business. And I got a little tired of it after about, I don't know, 10 years or so. And then I decided, you know what? I want to become an affiliate marketer because it's just an interesting path to get away from one-on-one services and to develop content, which I love to do, I love to write and I love to take, I do a podcast, I do video casting, all this type of content creation that helps support mind body health. I have a website that's called the Mind Body Spirit Network, and I developed an affiliate website there that earns me passive income. And I'm like, you know what? I like earning commissions way better and getting commission checks that I don't have to interact with anyone for really and uh, generate passive income that way. And it's a fun way. I'm interested in that whole topic, alternative and holistic health. So that's how I got to where I am today. I gave up, although I still do take on some marketing clients because I do enjoy interacting with others on occasion. But I'm like, you know, I really love my location and time and financial freedom that affiliate marketing lends me. So for anyone listening who's never heard of affiliate marketing, Take us on like very high level, like what is affiliate marketing? You know, what does that business look like as a way to earn income? Okay. So for me, I think it's a good idea to be aligned with partners for whom you have an interest in what they're doing. That isn't true for everyone. Some people are just, you know, want to make good solid money, which is fine too. So as an example, I partner with people that develop online courses that are related to mind, body, spirit, health type of stuff. And what I do is I 
I know how to drive traffic to a website through search engine optimization and paid ads, things like that, to get people to attend a webinar that then if someone likes the webinar and they like the course offering, they'll buy the course. And then I get paid a commission for bringing in that lead to my partners. So affiliate marketing is really just, you're a salesperson and you're earning a commission by driving traffic leads and sales to your partner's websites, events, or products. And there's a lot of um, affiliate marketers for Amazon, as an example. So I will, I'm an affiliate marketer for Amazon and Etsy because I love to curate on Etsy for sure. Beautiful things related to like, let's say the chakra system. That's just one example where you can curate and put together things that people can really love. And I'm a designer, so I love to do that. And another great example is I love to, there's a search, people are searching for she sheds. So I'll do, I'll put together things to create your own mindful man cave is what I call it for men, a mindful man cave. And then another one would be like a Zen she said. So I will, as a designer, I'll go out and curate some items that I would put into, if I were to design a she shed for you, I would do that. And that's just another example of like, I, I write a blog post about it. People like what I've curated. So they go to Etsy, they make the buy, and then I would earn a commission from people on Etsy. So that's you. You a had sales. me a she shed, by the way. She, <laughs> exactly. You had me a she shed and the mindfulness <laughs> man cave. I do not have a she shed. I am a she right. and I would love a she shed. So yeah. I must find your blogs because I I could see myself going into sort of that, the... I don't want to call it a black hole. That sounds negative. But where you just like dive into just like browsing Pinterest and blogs and furnishing a fantasy she shed in my mind or putting up a little mini dream board about it. How fun is that? So you get to like create these hypothetical she sheds and here's a bunch of things you can put in it and look at this wall and look at this item. And then if people like your ideas, you know, it's your intellect, your mind, your, your creativity, they can just click on a link get that thing that you thought up for them and then you would get a commission if they purchase it. Exactly. I love it. Right. And that thing lives forever on my website. And right. if, you know, if a, if a post I did is really popular, which I'll see in my analytics, I'll see, in fact, I had one, one of those she sheds was, it was a yoga studio she shed it was one of my popular keywords that brought people in. I'm like, oh, I need to go boost that one up. And then just you boost it up and you do what you can to get it found. And maybe I would pay to get that that found if it turned out to be a successful post that generated commissions. I would boost it up. But once you create a great piece of content, there's not much more you need to do. You share it on social media and let it kind of live its own existence. And you bring in the commissions for it. So tell us about your podcast. What do you podcast about? Because obviously... We've got some podcast listeners listening yes. to this episode, and I'm sure they're looking for other great podcasts to add to the lineup. Thank you. Well, I actually have two of them, which is a bit overwhelming, as you may imagine. The one I do for the AthenaArena.com is called the Athena Arena, and it's marketing and business tips. But the other, it's a two purpose podcast. One is that marketing and business and entrepreneurial related stuff. But the other part is really my passion, which is mastering your inner game. So I discuss, I'm a teacher of consciousness, which is a whole other discussion, but I understand where power is in consciousness. And I help people understand how to make better choices. Like, and I put it into context, meaning just a great example is branding. If you were to, it it makes so much sense in consciousness to differentiate your business because it's proven in consciousness to increase your likelihood of success in a quantum way. So I sort of discuss, I mean, it's a little high level stuff, but I I put things into context. So it's like, okay, this is a good idea. I mean, you can imitate a business and do well. It still has positive consciousness and energy in it to do that, but it's a quantum leap and increases your likelihood of success by really differentiating yourself in the marketplace. So that's kind of like mastering, one aspect of mastering your inner game, which most people, most of those episodes get more, people are more interested in that from me. Not that they aren't interested in the marketing, but mastering your inner game seems to be of more interest. 
which is where my other podcast, my, my podcast called Your Weekly Dose of Higher Consciousness brings that teaching into the business world. So I help people understand where is their true energy in consciousness? Where can you finesse the field of energy, so to speak, to succeed in life? And that's what I like to encourage people to do. And just like get out of your own head about stuff and realize that you can choose how you want to succeed or what you want to align with energetically. So those are my two podcasts. Your weekly dose of higher consciousness is really my baby for my other website, the Mind, Body, Spirit Network. Because I talk about all those, you know, mind, body, spirit related stuff. And and then the Athena Arena one is a combination of both because I really am more most passionate about mastering your inner game as it relates to business and success and balancing life for sure. And you're one of those people and lots of listeners were part of that tribe. We are part of you for sure. We're multi-passionate. We have different hobbies and interests and businesses and, and things we like to do. You've done so many different things. You have so many different interests. And how do you stay sort of balanced and sane? Because it's really easy as well to get pulled into many different directions. And I know when you, especially when you're doing design work, I mean, that is so, there's so much back and forth with clients. There's so many demands on your time. And sometimes you are not the champion of your own schedule and you sort of let yourself get pulled into too many things in the same day. What are some tips that you have? You've been doing this decades and there's entrepreneurs who are just starting out and they're trying to find a way to find that balance. And I hate to use the word balance because that sort of implies that you can sort of do it all and that you hit this balance point and there you are and now it's perfect. And it's, I think, more of a work in progress at all times for everybody. But what can you tell us to help me, to help listeners, to help entrepreneurs keep that white space in their calendar? Well, it's funny that you said balanced and sane in the same word. And this is one of my podcasts for your weekly dose of higher consciousness to understand the energy of balanced, normal, and sane is the same energy. So just look at it as a vibration in in life. It's like it it calibrates at the same level of energy and it happens to be a super high one. And I understand this and I've, I've worked with consciousness understandings for over a decade now. So I know how to, what I like to say, finesse the field. So I say to myself, I choose to be balanced, sane, and normal today. And that's an invitation to this magnetic attractor field of this energy that will support you in that effort. I mean, this is, people may think I'm nuts, but I understand the energy of it. I'm like, you know what? This isn't nuts. This is a sane choice to decide and choose those energy fields before I even start my, I do it every day. This is kind of like an, as opposed to an affirmation like I am, which is a powerful thing to do, to choose something is a quantum leap in power, which I understand as well. So if you're feeling out of sorts, and I have, trust me, felt I've had experiences in life that threw me on a tremendous roller coaster of suffering, which is how I got into this whole field of consciousness in itself. Because I'm like, how in God's green earth did I create that situation for myself? So I needed to understand what I did. And I clearly recognized that this was a roller coaster that I couldn't control at its worst. I'm like, I didn't know how to help myself. But today, like I like thank God for balanced, sane and normal. And it's just, you, you can feel the inner peace and the groundedness of it, where you develop a sense of self that is not affected. You become a not, you don't react to stuff anymore. You're like, oh, and people react to you differently too. They can't really affect you. So they kind of back off. And I, I recognized this in my 20s, that there was something about me that could diffuse the bomb of people that were out of sorts. like. All I'd have to do is walk up to them and not be reactive. And they'd be like, oh, they'd realize they're being irrational or whatever it may be. But you've got to become that within yourself and choosing it every day is what I do. And that's what I'd recommend. And and you're just going to feel eventually the energy within yourself is going to shift. And you're going to be like, oh, I see what's going on here. And you won't think I'm like loony and wishful thinking. It's not wishful thinking. I'm choosing and attracting the support of that energy into my 
my day. And so if we talk numbers, because I see here, you've been a chef, an interior designer, floral designer, you've done wholesale, you've done web graphic design, you've produced videos. You've talked to us about the affiliate marketing. So putting aside your own personal preferences, right? Like the, the activity that you like doing the best from all of those businesses, which one, when you look back, do you think has the most sort of bang for the buck, like the the most earning potential per hour of time? Because we're all about conserving time. That's such a valuable yeah. resource. So for someone that's a, I call them entrepreneurs, right? You want to be an entrepreneur. You're not quite there yet. You're still in the corporate grind or you might still be in school. You haven't even gone out into the workplace yet. But there are people who are trying to choose a path and decide what kind of entrepreneur they'll be, what sort of business they'll they'll start. You've done a lot of different businesses. Can you tell us some that putting aside personal preference on activities, right? Not everybody likes art. Not everybody right. wants to cook and be a chef. But which one do you think was sort of the most income per hour expended? Well, what I'm doing now is uh, what I would recommend to those that want to have a freedom lifestyle is to like, I love, let's just put, let's just say cooking and floral design as an example. I know how to market and I understand marketing and I understand uh, market research. And I'm like, you know what? Creating a course around something that I love is the way to go for me, money wise, because I can reach far more students and interact in larger communities by sharing what I know and how to do. And I know people love and appreciate my creativity. That is the way for me to leverage my expertise is in a course. And by the way, it happens to be one of my strong suits in general. So what I could recommend, this was very helpful to me, is I took something called a Clifton Strengths Test. Have you taken that? Are you familiar with it, Flavia? I'm familiar with that one. Yes, there's some right. such great tests out there. So tell us a little bit about it. So there's plenty of great tests out there. And I just happened to cross this one over almost two years now. I'm like, you know what? It was like 20 bucks to take the test. I'm like, I'm just going to take the test. Before I, I was ready to dive into something new. And if you tend towards a lot of interests like I do, I'm like, you know what? I need to go with my strong suit. So I took the test and the test delivered uh, my top five skills, strengths, my top five strengths. And they said, if you want to know your top 34 strengths, you can take it more of the test. I'm like, you know what? I do not need 34 strengths to give my attention to, period. So I looked at the top five. I'm like, geez, what can I do with this for a business? And number one was strategy. It was my number one strength, which I didn't even know, but I did know. And it's so innate within me that I didn't recognize it as my strength. It's just what I do. I strategize about stuff. So how to create a business, how to create a lifestyle. But my second, my second one was creativity, lots of creativity. But my third one was teaching, coaching, mentoring. Like, Because I was kind of leaning towards that teaching. Like I got to create a digital course. This is going to give me freedom because I'm already selling it for others. And I'm like, I should be selling it for myself. So anyway. That helped me solidify plans. So if you're, if you're planning, you want to plan some type of lifestyle or business change, find out what your skill set is and go with your strong suit. And those tests, I, I did a whole podcast on the Athena Arena about the Clifton Strengths test is of higher consciousness, meaning you can trust it. You can trust what it's pointing you to. So it's a good, instead of like throwing darts and hoping for the best, which, you know, I'm a creative type. So I've thrown a lot of darts, as you heard, (laughs) like go with your strong suit. And then how can you incorporate what you love to do, which you probably already love doing it. You just haven't had it pointed out to you. You're like, oh, I felt like this is what I love to do. And then you just start develop a plan around that. So it was an easy way to go to develop courses. It's like a no brainer for me. And I know that I'm a good teacher and I, I get that feedback from podcasts and groups that I've, that I teach out and things like that. So it's incredible. So you get a lot of people are teachers, but they don't know that they can actually earn a revenue and income from their teaching. Oh, yeah. Like if yeah. you, if you're listening and there's anything that you ever get asked to explain to someone, like people come to you and say, I have to learn how you do this. Teach me how, show me how, if you're, constantly out there having coffee with people who are like, can I pick your brain? Because 
you do this so well and I want to know more about it. You probably do have an online course inside of you that really you should put out there into the world yep. so people can learn from you and, and get that knowledge and compensate you for it, right? It's an exchange of, of value because right. what you have in your brain, you know, between your ears is very valuable and unique. Yes. And while we're on the topic and you're, and you're sitting there thinking, well, I can make the course, but how do I market it? Well, here you go. I, if you create a high a course of higher consciousness, which I typically can test whether a course is of higher consciousness or not, you start create an affiliate program for your course. So others can help you do the marketing. Just a little idea there of how you market it. There's many ways to market a course. And that's just one. If you're like, you shut yourself down because you don't want to do the marketing. It's like others can help you do the marketing through affiliate partnerships. Well, you've shared so much great information and given, I think, a lot of ideas that we can all follow up on for our own businesses and ourselves. Tell us again, the podcast names so people can subscribe and also where yep. does someone go to check out your blog, especially if they want tips on she sheds and uh, she sheds. Man <laughs> love it. I'm um, mindful man cave. I love that one, I have to say. <laughs> so tell us, where do people connect with you further? Okay. So my affiliate marketing website, this is how I earn my income, is by consciously curating content, podcasts, videos, courses, is the mindbodyspiritnetwork.com. And I actually, my differentiator, I spoke about that earlier, is that I do calibrations of things that I shared. So I make sure that I share things that are of higher consciousness and can actually help you. That's a huge differentiator for that. And my podcast for that is your weekly dose of higher consciousness.com. And then my marketing and business related website is the Athena arena.com. And I have a podcast by the same name that discusses marketing, entrepreneurship, and mastering your inner game as it relates to success in life and business. Liz, you are amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show and taking part in this conversation, which was so helpful to so many I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I hope we run into each other again soon. Thank you, Flavia. You're very generous for having me. I appreciate being here. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one -on -one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.